Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with your weather forecast update for mid-weekend. Things are decently quiet for this evening and should be remaining that way as we go throughout the rest of Saturday night into Sunday morning. A slim chance of some severe weather left over in parts of the area, but right now, not looking at too much of anything out there outside of just what we have left over, and that's going to be about it for showers and thunderstorms for later on tonight. We'll talk more about the complete forecast for the rest of the weekend and into next week coming up. Some very chilly temperatures tonight, possibility of some frost in the Mid-South once again, and also the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms next week into next weekend. Right now, it doesn't look like a washout, but once again, that's one of the things we're going to have to watch as the river levels continue. We'll talk about that. We'll take a look at more of your weather pictures coming up here in just a little bit from around the Mid-South area. And, of course, we'll take a look at something that's happening about... 25 minutes from now, it's called Earth Hour. It's your opportunity to learn more about conserving energy and, more importantly, saving money and preserving our natural resources. We'll tell you more about that coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for there. Quick check of your forecast into overnight. For those of you who can't stick around for the whole thing, by the way, if you need the forecast, you can check out this website for more details or check out the scroll at the bottom of your screen. As you see, again, the information scrolling along there so we can keep you updated on what's going on. If you can't stick around for the whole time we're on here, that's cool. Just drop by when you can. And thank you very much again for joining us for tonight. Temperatures will be heading back into the mid 30s for the metro area, and there could be some patchy frost across portions of the mid south. So if you put some of those plants out, that you want to keep around for the rest of the growing season, cover them up or move them inside. And it's not only for tonight, it's for tomorrow night as well. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Earlier today, very close to normal, 70 degrees, 54, just a little bit above our average low temperature for this time of the year. Record high that hasn't been broken since 1986 of 85 degrees. Record low of 23 back in 1964. Nine hundredths of an inch of precipitation still ahead for the year by almost four and a quarter inches, so doing pretty good there. Mississippi River, not too much to show you in the way of major problems with fog in the channel for tonight as the Mighty Lights display does its thing. We are looking again for the river to drop over the next several days. Now, as we reach the possibility of going toward about early to mid-month in April, there's a possibility we may see again a bit of an uptick as more water drains its way down the channel from up north. So that could be a bit of an issue for areas around and close to the Mississippi River. Those drainage channels, those creeks and streams could back up by just a little bit as the water comes back up once again. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in tonight. Thanks a lot for dropping on through. Uh, and definitely want to leave us your city, state, and if you've got a weather report, we'll read out some of those uh, as we go along here. So thanks a lot for dropping on by. Joy Allen Severa, hope I'm saying that correctly, from a soggy Oxford, Mississippi. Thank you very much. Uh, for joining us uh, in the Mid-South and the weather report there. Munford, Chile, Mary R. Phillips, thanks for joining us uh, for tonight as well. Snowing in Indiana, Diana and Stacy, yeah, I could, uh, saw that on the maps earlier, uh, and uh, hopefully not too much of a show up there for snow for tonight. Uh, Amy Cisco Harrison, Jackson, Tennessee, cold reported there, and around the rest of the area dropping through. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, temps dropped fast in Jackson, Tennessee. Lynn Neely Rowell. Rowell, hope I'm saying that correctly. Big River Crossing doing its thing at the top of the hour display. And again, not too many people out for a jog or a stroll tonight as those temperatures are making their way on downwards for this evening. So we'll continue to see some pretty low temperatures tonight and into Monday morning. Could be kind of frosty at the bus stop for the kids, so something to think about there if you have any plans uh, for that one. Missy K. Wilkerson from Boonville, Mississippi, currently pouring rain and temperatures continuing to drop. Thank you very much for that report. Terry Harwood from Batesville, Mississippi, just raining. Thank you very much for that. In the metro area right now, not a lot happening. Just a few light scattered showers, remnant showers pretty much of anything else out across much of the area. Going out to the rest of the Mid-South, the heaviest activity in a couple of lines of thunderstorms 
from just to the south of the Mississippi-Tennessee state line down to just around, it looks like, Amory and Houston and right across I-22 heading into northwestern Alabama. That should do it for the showers and thunderstorms tonight. That'll wipe them off the map and should be about it for the rest of the area for the next few days. So we will dry out again by just a little bit into the area. In the meantime, some very cold winds heading on through. Now, if you're watching this, and it's again a little bit after 8 o'clock on Saturday night, if you live in northeast Mississippi, say east of Oxford, Corinth, back up toward the Tennessee River Valley, around Bethel Springs, uh, close to the area around Savannah, you may still see some thunderstorms out there, and there is going to be a slim chance of some severe weather. Not great, but still out there. We'll show you the map on that in just a little bit. Most important for tonight is, again, a freeze watch going into effect for all of the News Channel 3 viewing area counties, with the exception of parts of northwest Mississippi and Phillips County in eastern Arkansas. This is issued, again, for the possibility of frost out there. It's mainly for gardeners, anybody in agriculture. If you have plants outdoors, you need to protect them. Wouldn't be a bad idea just to make certain that your faucet is dripping. Not exactly a hard freeze, but it's a lot more economical to leave the faucet dripping hot water than it is to pay for a burst pipe someplace. So please consider that. And this will continue through Monday morning. So this is not only for Saturday night into Sunday morning, it's for Sunday night into Monday morning. So we've got two nights of some pretty chilly weather coming our direction, and that includes basically all of the News Channel 3 viewing area. All right, running the numbers into the rest of the evening. Should be seeing those northerly winds coming in. These are coming in from off the plain states, so it's wrapping around the backside of that storm system. And as it does, that's very dry air, so that's going to be sweeping out the rainfall through about News Channel 3 at 10, eroding it, leaving behind the gray colors here. That's where we see the cloud cover a little bit more clear skies into eastern Arkansas, but notice what the temperatures do as we go into early tomorrow morning. Winds continue a little breezy. I don't think we're going to have too much frost out there because you really need some more calm winds. And tomorrow, the winds are going to be out of the north early in the morning, about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and that's not a very still atmosphere. You need something a lot more calm. Could see some frost in areas that are sheltered from the wind, but I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot of widespread, especially if those winds continue out there for tonight. Through tomorrow afternoon, it's going to be much cooler. Again, remember on the Almanac, high temperatures today were around 70 degrees, and tomorrow's high temperatures briefly are going to be back in the mid to upper 50s or so. So we will see, again, some changes on that for right now. Uh, Ripley, Mississippi, Lisa Edwards Spangenberger, hope I'm saying that right, Thunder in Ripley, Mississippi, thank you for that one. Uh, everybody else for checking in for right now. Going to be chilly in St. Louis tomorrow, Amy Hayes, yes, and uh, say hello to my friends Steve and Judy Newell up in uh, Manchester if you bump into them up that direction. Raining in Oxford, Keisha Whitfield, thank you very much for the kind words and the weather report, do appreciate it, and Dorothy Womack, hope I'm saying that right, raining in Walnut, Mississippi. Thank you very much for that one. All right, rest of the day tomorrow, again, starting off with a few clouds and some showers very early in the morning, and then going for more sunny skies throughout the day. It will continue to be breezy tomorrow with winds out of the north at about 5 to 15 miles an hour. Again, Monday morning at the bus stop, could be some frost around the area, mostly sunny with a few more clouds coming on through with a minor storm system just giving us a few clouds from Monday into Tuesday. Back to sunshine on Tuesday, a little bit warmer, just below normal temperatures, close to normal on Wednesday, a little bit, again, up and down over the next couple of days, but not exactly the huge wibbly-wobbly temperatures we've had out there for a while. Chances of rain return by Thursday into Friday. Next weekend, a brief break early in the morning on Saturday before we get into some more thunderstorms coming up throughout the rest of the weekend. But if you're going to be putting the plants back outdoors again, it looks like conditions will be okay. Bit chilly, but not bad for leaving the plants outdoors if you have any. Uh, not seeing any frost in the next several days. And also very mild temperatures, pushing 80 degrees by the time we head into about the second week of April. So looking a little bit better, hopefully not too much of anything that, thing in the way of frost for later on tonight, but we'll update you on that coming up on News Channel 3 Daybreak. 48 in Crenshaw, Mississippi, Bonnie Cummins, 
and also Wendy there. Thank you very much uh, for that one and everybody else for checking in uh, for this evening. Thanks to everybody for some great weather pictures from TN underscore WX from Carroll County Recreational Lake in Tennessee. I believe that's around Huntington, if I'm not mistaken. Beautiful sunset from just a couple of days ago with a few clouds out there. So thank you very much for that one. Deborah J54, a uh, very great picture taker around Humboldt, Tennessee, always willing to share some of her weather pictures out there from Northwest Tennessee. So thank you very much for that and all the others that you've been featuring there as well. As well. James R. Gulledge, also from Humboldt, getting some sunlit flowers on Friday. So thank you very much uh, for sending that one in. And our own Alex Coleman, who was down around Greenbelt Park around Mud Island and the Mississippi River today. A little gray out there, but Alex always manages to find the silver lining in the clouds and uh, does a very good job of showing a little bit more about what's going on around the community. So thanks to uh, Mr. Alex Coleman here at News Channel 3 for showing us a little bit more. Uh, the Greenbelt Park area is starting to recover a little bit. We're starting to see the river drop by just a few feet in the last couple of days, but at least the grass and the trees are starting to be recovered from all that flood water going on, so good news on that. Got weather pictures? Please send them in to me. I would love to feature them on air or online. Again, if you have them, please send them to my Facebook page or my Twitter feed or Instagram, or you can email me here at austin.onic at wreg.com. So thank you very much for sending that in. It is the night. We've been waiting for this for quite some time. Tonight is the night. It's called Earth Hour, not Earth Day, but Earth Hour. And in just a little less than 15 minutes, I'll be doing what I've been doing for the last four years here at News Channel 3. I'm going to go around the station and see how many lights have been left on. It's very easy for us as Americans to just leave the lights on. Our kids do it a lot to just not turn things off because why turn them off if you're just going to walk back in the room 15 to 20 minutes later or two days from now? It's a lot easier just to leave the lights on. Well, that costs energy and it costs money. It may not seem that much. If one person throws away an aluminum can, it might not make that much of a difference. But if 350 million of us throw away aluminum cans, that makes a huge difference. If you'd like to know more about Earth Hour and how you can help to reduce energy consumption and to save money, this is a great way to start on this. And we'll be giving you more information on this. Now, again, just a hint on this is what we're looking at. If you leave a light on in your home or your business or wherever, you don't turn off the light. Again, this is something that will cost you. Say it just costs a penny a penny a day, a penny a year, whatever. Let's just say it costs one cent to leave that on. If you leave it on from Sunday midnight all the way through the week to Sunday midnight, that's 168 hours that you are paying for. Now, let's say you run a business like News Channel 3 and you have the opportunity to install things like motion sensors in places like bathrooms or closet spaces that can easily be turned off automatically, saving you a lot of that. So instead of paying $1.68 per week, per year, whatever, you program it to turn on only during regular business hours from, say, 6 a.m. to about 6 p.m. 6 a.m. Monday through about 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. It saves you a lot, over 100 hours worth, so you've cut down over two-thirds of the amount of energy that you are having to pay for. I've done this for the last few years. I don't go into anybody's private offices. I just go around and take a look and note how many and which types of light bulbs have been left on in a certain area, add those up, and a couple of years ago, we were spending about $10,000 plus here at News Channel 3 to keep the lights on where we could easily just have flicked the light switch. So something to think about if you'd like to know more. Stay tuned for more on my complete wrap-up tomorrow on the latest edition of Your Environment video blog that will be coming up on Sunday. And, of course, don't forget about our podcast, which you can download. It's National Weather Podcast Month. Tornado Alert Emotional Terror is available on iTunes, Spotify, and again at WREG.com slash weather if you'd like to find out more there. More on my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And coming up, if you've never seen this before, again, this is our little salute to everybody out there who is spending time away from home, serving their country in the armed forces of the United States. One of the places we look at is in Greenland in Thule at Patuffet Air Force Base. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Negative 12 on the Fahrenheit scale, wind chill of minus 28, and the high temperature today in Greenland has been zero. So you can see what life is like for some of our armed forces personnel 
uh, back on the northwest coast of Greenland out there. So if you'd like to know more about that, all you have to do is just join me. Coming up at the top of the hour, more or less, about 10 minutes till, on my Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter pages, and we'll keep you updated on all of that. That'll do it for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Again, we'll have updates on the Earth Hour project going on here. Turn off your lights, count how much you have left on, and see about how much you could save with News Channel 3 by doing the same thing that we're doing here. We'll have updates on that coming up later on tonight and, of course, tomorrow on your environment. Questions, concerns, ideas, anything on here you'd like to see, email me, please, at austin.onic at wreg.com. would love to hear what you have a suggestion. If there's something on here you want to see, more uh, climate data, more weather almanac stuff, more satellite information from around the world, please say so, and we'll do what we can to get that on here for you. So stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3. I'll have more on News Channel 3 at 10, and of course on News Channel 3 Daybreak, starting bright and early at 6 a.m., so stay tuned for a lot more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of your weekend. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thank you for joining us for Weather Overtime, and stick around for a lot more throughout the rest of the weekend and right on into next week.